So I'm going to talk a little bit about the basics of picking on bass. Um, as you probably know, there's a lot of different kinds of picks I'll show you for the camera. There's, that's like a pretty standard size. It's a medium thickness. This is also pretty common, this kind of shape for bass players. And it's kind of a triangle. Uh, each side is a little curved. Then we have these kind that are a little bit more like a jazz pick. They're much smaller. Um, and these are usually used by jazz guitar players. Um, picks come in different widths. So they can be uh, soft, medium, hard. And there's, there's different amounts. So usually like on this one, you might be able to read. It says, oh, is it going to focus? It's not going to focus. Uh, so it's it says it's 0.73 millimeters. This one here is one millimeter. Um, the this one is nice and fat. It's 1.14 millimeter. Um, you gotta try different ones and see which ones feel more comfortable. They might cost a quarter at a music store, so buy a couple different widths so you can try them out. We're gonna uh, try two different ways of holding your pick. I'm using kind of the most common size pick. This one's medium. It's the kind that I prefer to play with. We want to, instead of just squeezing the pick between our fingers like that, we're going to squeeze our pick a little bit on the side. Now, some people pick it all the way on the side and maybe not quite that much, like that much. I do it usually around there. And depending on the position I'm in, I sometimes transition it between here to there, especially for palm muting. But so a couple things to keep in mind. Pretend my finger is the string. We're going to go across the string this way, right? Down, up. You can try going down up just like that and having the pick exactly at the same direction as the string. You can also try it at a little bit of an angle and see how that feels. You might find that it goes through the string a little bit easier and quicker. You don't want to go all the way sideways. You could, you could try it like that. It's much harder to, for me to be precise that way. I usually go somewhere in the middle, just at a little bit of an angle, depending how fast I'm trying to go. The other thing to really keep in mind in terms of our practice is we can practice down strokes and we can practice up strokes. And we can practice different combinations like down, up, down. And we can practice uh, down, down, up. Down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. Um, some of those different combinations work better. For example, if you're playing in something with a 3-4 time signature. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, down, down, up, down, down, up, right? The other thing to keep in mind is you can use a pick when you're practicing anything. So just like you're practicing your scales over here on your left hand, you're also practicing technique on your right hand. So, for example, I'll go just downstrokes. Just upstrokes. Down, up, down. And all the different combinations are great. Now, just as always, we want to do these exercises, how, whatever exercises we're doing with our left hand and playing a pick with our right hand, we want to do it with a metronome every single time because timing is the most important thing. So. down up down every time we can also if that feels real slow we can subdivide it and do it twice as fast so instead of going with the metronome like that we can play the eighth note one and two and 
So it would be like. Now really keep paying attention to how you're holding the pick and how much of an angle you're playing at. The upstroke, downstroke, where on your knuckle you're using, are you using flat? We can also use the side of our knuckle to palm mute. This, when I use a pick, this is usually the technique that I like to use because it gives it a really particular sound. Instead of sounding open and raw like that with a sharp attack, it's nice and muted. And again, right now I'm just playing whatever, but we can play this with whatever exercises we're working on with a metronome. Now, we're covering a lot of ground right now. If we want to move to, if, if, if we're good right there, maybe take a time out and just practice that. The next thing we're going to talk about, though, is skipping strings. So, the most obvious and clean thing to do in terms of practice is octaves, right? Two and two. I'm playing a D here, two frets over, two strings over, and a D here. So I'm playing D, 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 D. Now, I started out doing a uh, downstroke, 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 downstroke. When I went up to E, I went upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, up to downstroke. Jumping strings is a different challenge. Now we can also go and use different combinations. Downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, upstroke, downstroke, upstroke, downstroke. Setting these things up with a metronome every time is really gonna get you far. And remember, the notes are important, but as a bass player, the rhythm is the most important thing. If you play a wrong note somewhere, people are gonna forget about it. If you shift the rhythm of the song or don't hold it together, it might be a bigger challenge. So always practice with the metronome. That's basics of picking. And remember, try some different picks out. Go to a music store or order online. You can get different thicknesses, different shapes, and you can also just try different stuff out. Try holding it what in what most people think of as backwards. Instead of playing it with the tip, with the wider curved side. And always definitely check out Carol Kay. Carol Kay is one of the most recorded bassists of all time. She was a studio session musician in uh, Southern California and throughout the 60s and 70s and 80s, uh, especially, but also a little into the 90s and 2000s. She was recording on tons of tracks. She almost always used a pick mostly because she started out as a guitar player, but her bass lines came out so clean. She's featured on Beach Boys albums. Uh, she's played on La Bamba. Um, she played on a lot of Quincy Jones tracks, a lot of soundtracks. The list is really long. Um, I really recommend looking her up for picking, bass picking in particular, and also all kinds of other technique stuff. That's intro to bass picking.